we've built a mono blue artifact deck. We we have 15 artifacts in the main deck, uh, and then some more cards that you know get us artifacts, uh, generate artifacts. Mm, it's more of a blue deck that wants to get onto the board and then keep drawing gas with Padim. I'm really not sure how good this is, but yeah. As always, we'll take it through the league and see how it goes. All right, first match with this deck, and we'll go first. <laughs> All right, we're playing the mono blue artifact mirror, and I think this is just a keep because Padim hopefully draws cards. Blink of an eye gives us a bit of defense. We'll see. But our opponent is off to a turn one renegade map. We'll use the ether super to get onto the board. So now we know that our opponent can cast turn four Zahid. And a 5-6 flyer is some serious pressure. Uh, we don't have another good use for energy in our deck and also getting an artifact onto the board is nice. Right now we don't have the artifact with the highest converted mana cost though because that renegade map has a higher converted mana cost than our servo. So let's see what they are going to do with 3 mana. Dynavolt Tower. So the fight for the converted mana cost has not really begun because we don't really compete. <laughs> but we're going to draw three cards anyways. All right, uh, now we do have one that actually at least competes with the Dynavolt Tower. Although Zahid coming down this turn will make our life fairly difficult. I feel like. All right. So. I feel like Tempest Gin Blink of an Eye gives us the best chances. Because that basically time walks them. They need to spend another 4 mana just to redeploy Sahid out of their hand. And we also get to hit them for 2. Maybe I didn't play the Field of Ruined as early as I did, just because of Tempest Gin. But then again, like we can still play our islands. It's just gonna like take us one more turn. What? They didn't put this into their hand? Because I recently learned that if you recast Zahid using his effect, you still need to pay two more if he's your commander. So I think them put it, not putting it into their hand is a huge mistake. Okay, so we know all of their six cards in hand are spells, or most likely are, because our opponent wouldn't give us give up a free artifact on board. Treasure map generates value over time, but isn't super threatening right now. Reverse engineer, well. Now our opponent's going to take a lot of damage this turn at the very least. And Walking Ballista lets us cast Ballista for one and also deploy the Raiders. So now they're going to take five. Already puts them to 11. 
So in theory, uh, they are dead next turn, but I think our opponent has something to say about that. Zalfiren Void makes their draw a bit better. They put the card on top. If they just recast Zahid, that's like a super weak turn. Okay, so uh, let's let's see. So if they block this, we just trade. If they block there, they take one, two, three, nine, ten. Wait, one, two, three, one. I'm so dumb. Like, I need to recount that like a million times. I think they're dead on board though. Because they take 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. No, they have to trade Zahid for Tempest Jin, which is fine. That is fine by me. So now these trade and we resolve the harvester. I always think about resolving Padim, but like Padim doesn't draw us cards because we we only have artifacts with mana cost zero on the battlefield. Those aren't very strong in that regard. I guess it also grants the Walking Ballista Hexproof, which could be relevant against the Dynavolt Tower on the other side. So with our opponent on four, this is lethal. An unblocked Walking Ballista is also lethal. And Ether Super and the Servo Token just push in some more damage. And we're 1-0. Oh. All right, we won the die roll again. Let's go first. We have the power play of Ornithopter on turn one. I'm going to keep this. It's a bit slow against Mono Red, but I don't think we can afford to mulligan this. Uh, we will need to draw one of our two mana enchantments to combat Karizev. Actually, playing the Ornithopter this turn is bad, right? It's only good against... Yeah, it takes away a lot of synergy, but... And it only prevents, like, one damage against the 1-1 one, one haste guy. Oh, against the two 1-1 one, one haste guys. Alright, um... So, we hope that treasure map, map can fix our draw at least a bit uh oh shit 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 no 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 upkeep i need my stuff in my upkeep so it looks like our, our opponent kept a one lander which with zalfir and void i did the same yesterday right because you're like 25 percent to chance like you're 25 percent to miss i think uh to miss a land on three draw steps because you have like 25 lands or something. Oh, all right, they hit. All right, uh, let's find like ice over or something. Oh, Glintness Strain is also nice. Because that actually gives us a blocker against the monkey token. And we're even safe against Chain Warler because of colorless sources. Oh. Mox Amber. Mox Amber must be broken. It's just, yeah, it's way too good with Padim. 
with any legendary creature really. I predict that at some point this is just broken in modern because like if you ever played a Baral Mirror and someone had Mox Amber, it's so dumb. I tried building like a Baral deck in, in modern with Mox Amber and like counter spells, but it just didn't come together really. So Padim is oh shit, I should have played Ornithopter now. Cause that actually like now it has hexproof. Oh no, don't do this to me. Compass is too slow now. Like we need a way to stem the bleeding right now. Okay, War of Invention can get us something that costs up to four mana. Up to four mana means Traxos, Harvester, Statuary. Oh, actually up to five with the Ornithopter. Sky Sovereign! Which we then can't crew next turn. Uh, Harvester. You can even get more with treasure map, right? Because treasure map costs two, generates three. So we can go up to six mana, but there's nothing at six, right? Oh, there's the immortal sun, which we have in hand. We probably just get Sky Sovereign. And then hope that we can find a good creature. We could also cast the Immortal Sun this turn. Wait, casting the Immortal Sun this turn is insane. Casting the Immortal Sun this turn is nuts. It's super bad against the Braid, but... Like, beating Karizev if they have, like, a, a, a playable draw with a Braid is gonna be tough anyways. Skizix. So we take six. We don't really have life gain in this deck. All right. We don't have life gain, do we? No, we don't. So, War of Invention gets us... Oh, Harvester's life gain. Yeah, we need to get Harvester. It's also really good life gain. So War gets Harvester, so that's five mana because it costs one less. So, so uh, how much mana do we have? We can tap one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight. If I still wanna draw a card. So that's six here, five there, and five here, that's not enough. I can tap nine, no, okay, so I can't cast Padim this turn. 
Oh, actually, I can. I can. I can. Because uh, I can use Padim to crew harvester. Yeah. Jeez, the Immortal Sun is so strong, and I think this deck is like really good at at doing Immortal th Sun things, right? Okay, Firebrand doesn't matter. So how much damage are we taking this turn? Three, four, but we also gain four life. Sure. So now we tap this. X is three. We get the harvester. It even has hexproof, that's just ridiculous. Wow, this this game has played out beautifully. Like, this is just beautiful. And they didn't even tack with the firebrand, which I don't really understand. All right, so now we basically just need ways to generate energy. But since we draw three cards a turn, like, yeah, wow. Holy shit, this is broken. This is insane. This is so dumb. This is so much fun. <laughs> oh my God, check this out. Jesus, this is dumb. I guess I needed to cast the Traxxas first, actually. <laughs> Traxxas generates mana. It's like... In, it, <laughs> it can improvise stuff and then it untaps if you cast an artifact. That's really funny. That's really cool. So now the Harvester will gain another four for us. We don't even have to worry about our Eternal Sun, Immortal Sun being destroyed because uh, it has Hexproof. I want to keep a blink, so I'm not gonna cast this. Oh, never mind. I can cast the sailors, because it generates a treasure. Shane Whirler. Yeah, that doesn't do anything. I just have to be careful with blocking with Padim, but they can't really attack anyways. All right. Let's draw another card, and let's draw another card and another one. Ah, oh, hello. They're dead, right? 8, 10, 11. Ah, oh, they're actually not dead on board. Uh, whatever. Um, let's cast Sailor, I guess. She's the immortal son with the stature is also like Ridiculous levels of dumb. Ooh. 
It's nice. <laughs> uh, let's bounce their board. Okay. We'll just attack for 10 this turn. What? Why would you concede now? Uh, that was that was really good. <laughs> that match played out beautifully and like their draw wasn't terrible. Our draw wasn't insane. This this game gave me hope that we might have game against Mono Red. Okay, so now we're up against Teferi, and Teferi might be tough because it's like the control deck. Our draw seems to be okay. Bit land heavy, but opt. Okay, uh, resolving the Immortal Sun would be pretty good, but. Uh, without our counter spells on our own, uh, it's going to be difficult. If this resolves, we might have a shot, because then we just never attack with it. And if we don't attack with Walking Mother there are not that many ways that um, Teferi can kill it. Also, Deep Freeze and Ice Over, like all these cards are just garbage here. As is Sky Sovereign. Okay, so, uh, yeah, I shouldn't have complained about too many lands when, when I can draw worse cards. So now we just pass, because if they don't do anything, we can pump up Walking Ballista. If they cast Teferi, we commit it. What are they going to do? Pump it up. Alright, we pumped it up successfully. It's basically about who can have something meaningful on the other player's end step. Cast out probably takes away our walking ballista. Which is, oh, no, I don't want to, which is bad because it basically takes away our only threat right here. And now we, like, now they just play the draw go game better than we do. If they counter here, I'm gonna like think about that for a second to at least make them think about negate. Maybe negate is actually playable because it counters a braid out of the red decks. Commit. And now we're just dead. As soon as Teferi hits the board, it's going to be super tough for us. Approach. That's doable. That That's no problem at all. Like... To say that's not a problem at all is kind of an overstatement, but like... So right now it's the sixth card, sixth card, and now they just shuffled? What the fuck is going on? What the fuck is happening? Why would they cast memory? 
What? What just happened? So they have a six out of 48 chance to like win the game next turn, but what that no Can someone it no? I don't understand I don't what What just happened? I'm gonna be so salty if they drew the approach off of that. I guess they have like eight in 48 to win, which is one in six. And we have to find commit or put on some pressure. And I guess we're putting on some pressure with the Immortal Sun. Also, their Teferi is dead. They can't cast Teferi. Jeez. Like, they can, but they can't activate it. I didn't even realize. The Immortal Sun is so insane. Oh, and with Padim, we draw like a billion cards. Oh my goodness. Well, they probably have a counter spell for the Sundering, which is annoying. We can tutor our walking ballista. With the inventor's fear. Uh, this is spell swindle, which is quite bad. Uh, I didn't even need to play that. That was dumb. I think I want to bounce treasure map. No, I want to activate inventor's fair. Oh my god, they put a card on top, so that's likely approach. Or not. What's it gonna be? Holy moly, our opponent tapping out for memory on that one turn was the nuts. That was just holy moly. Expel from Oraska. Hmm. I need this to go to my library instead of command zone. Sure. Oh no, 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 I'm so dumb. Now I can't activate Inventor's Fair. That was well played, Jamin. Well played. I feel like such an idiot sometimes. It's ridiculous. Well, but at least I gain one life. That was like... Fuck. Why can't you activate? Because it would shuffle away my Padim. And I need my I need to draw my Padim. So I needed to activate it before the expel resolves. That was just... Uh, it wasn't my smartest moment.
They can't really waste resources on Padim. Because I just recast it every turn. And the Immortal Sun actually like... Wow. Activating that makes them seem very desperate. I hope they hit something, because then we can... Oh no, I hope they... Well, I don't know. I actually don't know. Okay. Uh, yeah, we still need to keep up commit for... Seal away. Oof, they have three mana left. How safe is it to go for the Temporal Sundering here? Like, I can go blink a treasure, Sundering. I feel like it's not going to get a lot safer. Do I need to blink a treasure? Yes, I do. I also need to do that now, because if I do it in my main phase, they just sacrifice it and float the mana. Uh, do I bounce treasure map or do I bounce seal away? Probably seal away. No, no. Why would I bounce seal away? Doesn't make sense. It just gives them a spot to seal away my Padim. Ah, uh, they do have the two mana counter spell. <laughs> yeah, whatever. They didn't scry on upkeep. <laughs> Better scry now. Yeah, so now it's just a race to war. Like, if they can find approach plus counter spell. If they have approach right now, they obviously win, but uh, they need to find approach plus a counter spell for our commit before we beat them down. And, like, we, we still draw three cards a turn. They also draw two a turn. In bolus is clutches. Right. Um, maybe we need to do something during our upkeep. Do I care about my Padim? I don't really. Oh my god. This makes me think I need to commit my the uh, in bolus. No, 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 no. I just activate this. <laughs> wow. Uh, I could have attacked with the Ornithopter. I basically just need to find more resources like i need to find anything search for his counter uh if they keep finding the resources to jump through their deck like stuff gets annoying all right that's good right yeah
Yeah, that's very good. Because... Yeah, we get back our Padim. No, I'm I'm dumb. I should have uh, I I misstepped. Gate. Sure. Wow, they have another counter spell. Holy shit! What the fuck is their draw? Like, <laughs> what? Well fucking played. Yeah, so now they like get to look for at five cards or something just to find approach. I think now they're favored. But like, wow. For this to happen, their hand needed to be insane. Destroy Zareska. Uh yeah. But I couldn't do that next last turn. I'll double block this, right? Why did they attack first? That doesn't make sense. Yeah, uh, like we we ne like I think this matchup is already unfavored. My, our opponent played horribly. Like they they cast the memory on that one turn. That's just the worst thing I've ever seen. Not the worst thing I've ever seen, but like that's a huge mistake. Let's say that against Teferi again. Mm, I still don't like the matchup since. Their counter spells just counter our relevant, like we don't have lots of relevant cards against them. But we'll see how it plays out this time. Uh, the compass, not great here. Treasure map, however, is a really good card because it generates value. Like the compass also does, but it only gets basics. Although I guess the compass kind of combos with Tempest Gin. Uh, War of Invention is probably, oops, I'm sorry, uh, is probably a valuable tool against them because it lets us play the draw go game, right? It lets us punish them if they tap out and it forces them to tap out at some point because we can threaten to get the Immortal Sun. Can't do that right now, however. So this turn I'm just going to cast Harvester. Getting in the gate out of Harvester is insanely good for us, I think. Because Harvester is not a great threat. And especially not one that's worth negating. This treasure map is huge, though. It's gonna... Uh, yeah, that's gonna be a real problem for us. Okay, them casting Teferi here probably means they have, like... What do they have? I don't know. Essence scatter or something? Nothing. Okay. It's fine by me. Okay. Um Yeah, to ferry coming down this early is very threatening. Ah, it's hmm. 
They have fumigates. Uh, there, there are just so many things that they can't have here, or we just lose. This is not the same opponent from last round, right? No, it's not. Search. Oh, yeah. Yes, at least we get to draw two cards a turn. Spell Swindle is so good against us. This doesn't work. Putting another creature into the board is also bad. Yeah, we're just way behind against the fairy, especially if they have like the the draw engines, right? Treasure map search. Cuz the fairy alone already draws two cards a turn. And they have like they have a fair amount of uh value engines, right? I guess it's literally treasure map and search. Are there more? Bolus clutches that. No, I guess they have six treasures. They just can't lose in any way. Like, I don't understand why people play this card because it's it's absolute garbage against mono red. But maybe I just haven't played with the fairy enough. They didn't activate the fairy last turn, did they? They just didn't, didn't give a fuck. Whatever, I don't know. I'm gonna force their hand to have a removal spell this turn, and if they don't, then they might lose. And if they do, then uh, a counter spell, I mean. And if they do have a counter spell, I'm just gonna concede because uh, I don't see how we ever win this. Meh. Let's not play against the fairy. All right, that's not the fairy. Fire Song and Sunspeaker. Sure, let's keep this. Uh, hand is okay. We we basically need to draw an artifact. Fire Song and Sunspeaker, like the we played against that with Mono Red earlier, and mm, I think it's really tuned to beat Mono Red, but not very good against other decks because it has like all the cheap removal spells that are great against Mono Red, but bad against any control-ish strategy. So it also didn't really show us any way that it could pressure the opponent. Okay, let's see. An Ethosphere Harvester. This basically means that we cast Padim next turn. Because I'd rather have Padim killed than Zahid. <laughs> Decommission and Prophetic Prism. That's that's not the strongest artifact we have in our deck. Also, luckily for us, we don't care about their life total at all. Gideon's Intervention. It's probably going to name Zahid. Uh, Padim. Padim, Zahid. It's all the same. 
Okay, so now they need to have one more removal spell. I'm not going to attack because the risk of them having seal away is is there. Like, it's a one-off, but I don't think pushing through one damage is worth enough. For me to take that risk. Fight with fire. Alright, they got me. Actually, we can just hard cast this. <laughs> no need to cast it for four mana. This way we even get to crew the harvester. I don't think we want to grant life. Actually, we do we'll probably want to grant life link to the harvester. It's just way too free. Yep, not attacking with Padim was correct since they do have the seal away. But them sealing away the Harvester also means they have yet another removal spell for Zahid because otherwise they would have just sealed that one away. Yep, and now we're out of gas after... Like... I know that our opponent has like Shock and Magma Spray and like all these unplayable cards in their deck. But it turns out if you don't draw those... Um, yeah. I don't know. I'm just annoyed by that. But now that like their deck are uh, basically is all answers, right? So I think they're pretty far behind here because we draw two cards a turn. We actually have like good cards in our deck. Like if as soon as we draw the Immortal Sun, game should be over unless they have like a braid. This is also really strong. I I wonder if we even play it here. I don't think we do. I think we just press our advantage with Arch. Cause Traxxas just gives them an ability to uh block with Fire Song and Sunspeaker. No need to do that just yet. We'll just keep drawing cards. Karn is one I will play because that draws more cards. Island and Baral's expertise. We'll probably get the island, but we don't really care what we get there. Since both cards are not super necessary, since Baral's expertise doesn't bounce enchantments. Lightning strike the Karn, well that's desperate. Hour of Devastation. Yep, that successfully gets rid of Karn. Also puts the Fire Song and Sunspeaker back into the command zone. Alright, so the treasure map is another super scary card against us, but luckily we do have Ice Over. And with Ice Over that shouldn't untap anymore. And then, I guess we can cast Traxxas now. Because now it actually pressures them into doing something. And while we're at it, sure. Let's have ourselves a Sky Sovereign. So, cool fun fact. Uh, Sky Sovereign is a legendary creature for Mox Amber, but since it's colorless, like as soon as you crew it, right? But since it's colorless, uh, Mox Amber still doesn't produce any mana. 3-0. Uh, oh, you're, you're back at playing Brawl? That's good. <laughs> 
going, dude. Uh, we we also just played against like two Teferi decks, both of which uh, demolished us. Um. Let's get Walking Ballista, I think. So we can kill... Oh no, let's actually just get the Immortal Sun. Jeez, as soon as we get that, the game's just over. Uh, also, whew, good thing that that trigger goes onto the stack. Because otherwise I would have forgotten to crew that. All right, take 15, go. I think today is the first time that I've seen Fire Song and Sunspeaker being played anywhere. I hadn't even seen the card ever. It's like the buy a box promo or something. All right. Um, this game really shows why building decks to beat mono red is not a good idea. Because you just like this deck is probably it might be favored against mono red, but it has so little game against any controlling strategy. I think this against Teferi will perform even worse than our deck against Teferi. But that's just my uh, intuition. And that's con that concludes our league run for Padim. Three and two. It's actually not bad. Like the, the deck felt super fun and I think we can tune it to, to have some more game against the fairy.